Divine Truth Feedback Discussions Jesus, Mary, and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. This is Session 1, Part 3 of the discussion Forgiveness and Dealing with Those Who Harm Me, where Jesus and Mary give some personal feedback to Sandra Tsai about her questions relating to God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance and address many common false beliefs regarding forgiveness, repentance, love, obligation, harm, and abuse. This session was recorded on the 19th of June 2018 from 11 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. The effects of refusing to forgive. So now let's get on to reading some of Sandra's letter, which I'll do. Mm -hmm. So she starts with saying, Spirits keep abusing me and telling me that I only have two options and both appear to lead to a hellish outcome. Could you tell me if this is true? Not forgiving lets your enemies win, but forgiving means that you now have obligations to love your enemies and to do for them. So we'll move on shortly to talk about some of the principles pertaining to what Sandra said just there in those first couple of statements. But is there anything you'd like to say first off? Yeah, before we actually discuss her personal emotions a bit in a little bit more detail, mm -hmm. I think it's important to see here that it, a person's, like frequently a person is not connected to the words they're stating. Mm -hmm. and, and what I mean by that is that if they reread what they had just stated, they would say, wow, I've got some feelings here about this, you know, that are quite <laughs> angry and upset or, you know, that they'd actually notice some of their yeah. feelings and emotions. So, so I feel one of the effects of refusing to forgive mm -hmm. is that you do not notice what you're actually doing mm. and how angry you actually are. Mm. Yeah. You just don't notice. Yeah. And in your state of not noticing, that's when you do things that harm other people. Yeah. I wanted to say that because it, sort of the letter itself illustrates that she's already in some of the effects of refusing to mm. forgive mm -hmm. without even seeing that she is. Yeah. And, and this is frequently what occurs when it comes to us refusing to forgive. We, we don't see that we are in it. We're, we're actually acting it out. Yeah. And, and all the negative things and the negative belief systems and the unloving thoughts and feelings that we have are all being acted out. And we don't even see them being acted out because we haven't gone through the emotions that we need to go through to forgive. Mm. We are continuing to act them out without even seeing that that's what we are doing. Yes. So I think that's an important thing to stay up, state up front mm -hmm. before we move on to the actual emotions that she has. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Personal emotions resisting forgiveness. So here we're speaking in context to the letter from Sandra, and we're just going to mention a few of the, the emotional attitudes that are displayed in the statements that she makes. Mm -hmm. So she says that, um, well, first off, she says that forgiving or not forgiving, both of them are basically going to lead to hell. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what she says. Yeah. yeah. So um, now that that obviously doesn't make any logical sense. Um, if you think of uh, our planet Earth, the reason why it's in such a dark condition is because the majority of people, when they have something to hurt them, they want to then hurt another. Yeah. So the refusal to forgive is actually what's driving them to hurt another. Yeah. And so you can see from a logical perspective that the refusal to forgive is, you know, the whole concept of eye for an eye mm -hmm. makes the whole world blind, is yeah. what Gandhi said. And, 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 and it's also very true emotionally that, you know, when we refuse to forgive, we start perpetrating things to other people that have been perpetrated to us already. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so we end up in this cycle of violence, mm -hmm. both emotional violence and physical violence and sexual violence. And spiritual violence mm. in the sense of, you know, violence that's perpetrated by religion. And we see this cycle of violence is happening because of the refusal to forgive. So, so hell results from the refusal to forgive, not from forgiving. the process of forgiving. Yeah. But do you feel that that's a sentiment, whether or not 
a lot of people on earth would put it that bluntly, it does appear to me that many people feel that, of course. well, I've, there's no point to forgiveness. Yes. But without forgiveness, I'm stuck with all this pain. Well, let, let's look at it. The majority of people on the planet, I'd say almost all people on the planet, while they're on the planet, mm -hmm. refuse to forgive. Mm -hmm. Now, to refuse to forgive, you have to have some justifications because it's not logical to, to refuse forgiving. Yeah. There's got to be some very strong emotional justifications that are not logical. Mm -hmm. And this is one of them. Mm -hmm. The whole idea that I'm damned if I do, I'm damned if I don't yes. type of idea, yep. which is a, basically an idea of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. You're basically saying that God isn't good. Mm -hmm. You know, God's not got any goodness in him. Well, I'm not going to get happier if I forgive. The other people are not going to be happier. You know, they're just going to be gloat over me and that they're going to, you know, they're going to do a whole heap of things to me. It's not in my interest to forgive. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, that's what you're saying. Yeah. So there's got to be some very strong emotions within you that are driving you to believe those particular things, yeah, doesn't there? There does. Obviously. It's interesting you said damned if you do and damned if you don't. And the, the, you know, the origins of that word literally relate to, to hell. To hell, <laughs> that's right. Damned if you do, damned if you don't yeah. is actually a statement relating to the fact that, you know, you Dis end up being damned. You're just da eternally damned. Yes, <laughs> which is sort of almost literally what Sandra says. Exactly. So, she's yeah. basically saying she's going to be involved in eternal damnation, mm. really. Mm. You can see why the Christian belief of hell, eternal damnation, came about. Because yeah. the average person, when they contemplate forgiveness, feels that it's an eternal damnation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And in their state of uh, lack of forgiveness, desire eternal damnation for those people who've harmed them. Of course they do. Yeah. yeah. The majority of people who have been harmed desire the persons who harmed them to be eternally tormented for the harm they've perpetrated. Yeah. You know, obviously, God, God's not going to do that ever mm. because it, it's not in proportion to the harm committed. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's like wanting God to be a, a, as unjust Mm -hmm. as you are, mm -hmm. you know, and this also indicates some very unjust feelings yeah. as well, doesn't yeah, it? Like it does. the indication that, you know, that people should be punished for longer than I'm punished. Yeah. Is yeah. a very unjust feeling. It is. You're like, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, let's look at one of her other statements, which was not forgiving lets your enemies win. Now, um, can you explain to me the logic that Sandra is using um, by staying, saying that? Because it doesn't really... Isn't she saying let, forgiving lets your enemies win? Well, she says it in both cases. She says not <laughs> forgiving lets your enemies win, but forgiving but, means that you now have obligations, which in other which words really lets, you, lets them win. Lets them win. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she seems pretty confused on this matter. She does. I think she means that given what she's heard from us about the uh, negative implications of not engaging forgiveness means that her enemies will go ahead and remain able to commit sins, but she, by not forgiving, is going to be punished or something. I, I feel her logic isn't clearly, well <laughs> clearly well formed, you know, yeah. um, because of the things we've yeah. already stated about emotions. Yeah. You can't, you know, she does have two contrary opinions here. Yeah. One, one of which is that it's, it, 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 you know, her enemies will win if she forgives them. Yeah. And the other one is that her enemies will win if she doesn't. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, in other words, that her own condition won't improve if mm -hmm. she doesn't, yeah. you know. Yeah. In other words, her own condition won't exceed her enemy's condition, condition. if she doesn't. Yeah. And, and, you know, all of this is just real self, quite selfish thinking, to be frank. Yeah. You know, it's like... It's not caring about the fact that why, why do we even feel they're enemies? You know, yeah. we, we'll never have a discussion about that later, right? Yeah. But, but, you know, the whole concept that, that anybody who harms you is your enemy uh, is not, you know, while they may set themselves up to be your enemy, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the fact that you believe they are is a problem inside of you. Mm. So, you know. And maybe <clears> we can talk a little bit about this this. Uh, very prevalent emotion of competition and letting somebody win versus <laughs> you losing and winning and losing. A lot of that um, 
comes from emotions we're resisting about power and control, don't they? But also conversely, like some people feel that, uh, you know, it's a humiliating state to forgive and yeah. and it's a, it's a sort of, a, you give, you... And you're going to get taken advantage of. Yeah. It's a big, it's a big yeah. concept about yeah. forgiveness that, yeah. you know, you're basically letting a person take advantage of you. It's not yeah. true. Yeah. But but there's a, you know there's there's so many distortions to this sort of concept that you know we need to discuss them obviously a lot more fully later. But, yeah. Um, but it does indicate, doesn't it, that you know I'm now involving emotions of power and humiliation in the concept of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that's a you know that means that I am I've got some addictions about power and some you know, sadness about humiliation mm -hmm. from probably my childhood, right? But but I'm not contemplating that in all of these questions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So there's a there's a condition that's causing me to make statements like this. Yeah, and it's quite obvious that the statements are, you know, as you say, competitive about power, control, mm -hmm. and a number of other those, all of which are out of harmony with love. Yeah. And, uh, and let's look at it honestly, like, Forgiveness lets everyone win. Yeah. Uh, isn't that a good thing? Yeah. You know, repentance lets everyone win. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Any other state doesn't let everyone win. In fact, lets no one win. Isn't that a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I just, I love the way you just said that because so often it, we say, you harmed me and now I have to forgive and you have to repent and we're on separates and it division division and actually i don't want to forgive i want you to feel bad no, 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 no. Uh, and instead of saying well this stuff's happened now it hurts uh wh what's going to be the best for everyone if i want to love that's what i want to know yeah uh, and and to say well forgiveness everyone gets better well there's your answer repent well, it's, it's right to say everyone has the opportunity to it benefits everyone, doesn't well, it? Forgiveness yeah. and repentance gives everyone the opportunity to get better. Yeah. It doesn't automatically mean everybody does. But it because allows. Because it, it requires action on their part <laughs> yeah. for them too. Of so, course. Yeah. Of course. And we'll talk but about that But it allows or it sets up the, uh, you could say that it sets up the environment for that to yeah. occur. Yeah. Because what you said was it lets them, which is a let, it's an yeah. allowance. It's an allowance. You're an allowing something to eventuate. That's right. Yeah. If you think about what the opposite of forgiveness does, you know, holding on to resentment, that that doesn't do that, does it? It basically forces everybody into a more hellish condition yeah. because I will then be angry with you, you'll be then be angry with me, and then I go, well, you're more angry with me than I am with you, so now I've got to be more angry with you and you be violent towards me, and then I've got to be violent towards yeah, you. Well, and it's in this, uh, yeah. you could say it's a cycle of degradation. Yeah. Forgiveness is the only thing that stops the cycle of degradation, mm -hmm. and repentance stops it as well. Mm -hmm. But but if you refuse to forgive and refuse to repent, it continues and worsens the cycle of degradation. So it certainly, it's lets every, like I said, forgiving lets everyone win, mm -hmm. repenting lets everyone win. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want everyone to win is yeah. a good question. It's a good question. Because that is a, that demonstrates if you don't want that, then it demonstrates a lot of anger within oneself. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. There's also that third issue, isn't there, of, uh, of the obligations regarding love. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just, you know, the whole word obligation and love don't <laughs> go they, together, no, right? <laughs> Mutually exclusive, they're mutually aren't they? Mutually exclusive. So yeah, they're opposites. Anybody, you know, frequently get emails about the obligation to love. And, well, you know. I guess the only way we could say it is, see, Sandra says love obligates me to do something, to love my enemies. But... Obligate is not the word, right word. No. If I had love, I would desire to love my enemies. I would choose. I would choose to love my enemies. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it, like, love can't obligate me because that's not what love does. Okay. Love is a desire. It's not an obligation. Yeah. So it's right to say love causes a desire for me to love my enemies. Yeah. And forgiveness causes that desire. Of course. It's a choice, actually, yeah. isn't it? So 
this whole she, she's sort of making a statement that feeling obligated to love mm -hmm. is a bad thing well of course it's a bad thing if you're obligated to love you, you're not loving anyway <laughs> <laughs> trust me i've tried it it doesn't yeah, work, doesn't work. It doesn't no. work. Yeah. and you've got to give up any sense of obligation you, there. you have to give up the sense that duty and obligation are qualities that you want to uphold yeah, and exactly. that they are in any way loving yeah. and once you do that you realize oh well, I can't have an obligation to love because love doesn't involve any, any obligation, obligation whatsoever. No, it's desire yeah. to love. Yeah. What is it I want? Now, it's right to say that uh, to live in harmony with love, mm -hmm. uh, there are certain sort of obligations, but even then they're not obligations. They're desires that come about living in harmony from living in harmony with love. Yeah. And when I say, uh, you know, desires, they're like, you have the desire to make to help people be happy. Yeah. You have the desire to make their life better. You have yeah. the, you know, these are desires. They're not obligations. No. You know, so you're walking down the street, you notice somebody who's not doing well. You desire to help them out. It's not you don't feel obliged like I have to help them out. Yeah, or I I'm a them. bad person if I don't help them yeah, out. Yeah, or, 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 or because I'm a loving person, I want to hold on to the idea that I'm a loving person. I've got to help them now. Yeah. That's not how you feel at all. You, yeah. you just do it because it, it's automatic. You know, it's yeah. like, like I don't spend hours and hours talking to people and feeling like, oh, here we go again. I'm obliged to do it. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just laughing because it's just so the opposite of <laughs> the way you are. You yeah, know. You know, it's because you desire to. It's yeah. like, that's what love is. It's a desire. It's not an obligation. So, so uh, why, rather than going into a lot of details about why Sandra would have these particular mm -hmm. emotions, because to be honest, that's her personal responsibility mm -hmm. to work out why. Mm -hmm. And if she had a connection with God via the conscience, she would already know why yep. or as well. But rather than say all that, it, it's we're, we're saying all this because it points to this underlying situation, and that is frequently our words are actually telling us our true emotional condition if we only read them back to ourselves. Yes. What I find very helpful sometimes is to type out something of how you feel mm -hmm. or what your statements you're making and then read it back over and over, asking yourself the question, is this a loving attitude that's coming out? Of what me do I here? really feel? What here? do I really feel here? Yeah. Right. What's really going on here? Mm -hmm. And and if Sandra had done that with her own email, she might have worked through quite a number of issues of of the fact that she's actually angry yeah. about a lot of beliefs that she has about forgiveness and repentance that are actually false. Yes. So isn't that funny too? I'm angry about my false beliefs, and yet I'm living in them. So I'm not that angry about them. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm still living them. It's, it's, uh, it's something, Sandra's in something that I see a lot of people in is where you, you have a negative, uh, an error-based belief. Yep. It causes negative consequences in your life as a but natural But it causes result. you to think things are true that are not. Yes, you first. believe error. Mm -hmm. you false beliefs, believe error. You think they're true. You think they're true. Compensatory things start happening in your life. And instead of questioning that process, what do I believe is true? Is it really true? What are my false beliefs? What are they? You yeah. know, how can I challenge them? We, we, we get caught up in reinforcing the false belief. We say, well, this consequence because of this thing that I believe to be true, which is actually false. And it, our, our life gets worse and worse because we're not yeah. stopping. Yeah. Yeah. It's a terrible cycle that we put ourselves in, but most people do it. So. Yeah. So, yeah, when we're talking about personal emotions resisting forgiveness, you can see here Sandra's got a few, obviously quite a few of them mm -hmm. that resist her desire to forgive. Remembering that forgiveness can only be engaged with desire. Yeah. Obviously, um, per these personal emotions, because they inhibit desire, yeah. they are going to inhibit a desire to actually forgive. Yeah. So she's saying that she's forgiving, but she hasn't got a desire to forgive, so obviously she's not forgiving. Yeah. And, and you can frequently see this happen with regard to discussions with people. Mm -hmm. You can feel, ah, oh, you don't want to forgive here. You don't yeah. want to take the action that's loving. You, you want to hold on to your negative mm -hmm. feelings mm -hmm. about this particular thing. And so because Sandra hasn't yet forgiven, she's talking about forgiveness in a hypothetical way, which is, uh, has a lot of error within it, her definition. Yeah. yeah, because she hasn't actually gone through the personal process of forgiving somebody yet mm -hmm. because of these emotions. Mm -hmm. 
she doesn't know how good it can be. Yeah. So that sort of brings us to our next point, doesn't it? Like, how, what, yeah. what are the negative effects of uh, of not going through the process yes. of forgiving? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of them. There is. And uh, and these personal emotions cause all of them. <laughs> <laughs> the desire to hold on to them causes all of them. Yeah, the, the desire to hold yeah. on to the resistance. Yes causes all of these harmful effects that yep. we're now going to list. Yeah, mm. yeah. How does not forgiving harm me? Well, we've done 15, a series of 15 <laughs> uh, presentations about forgiveness, compensation, conscience. You can see in that discussion that we've already sort of itemised um, a lot of the harm that results from the refusal to forgive and repent. So, yeah. so you know, the reality is there's not a large need for us to go through and itemise all of those again. But, yeah. but it is helpful, I feel, for a person to see that they are causing harm to themselves. Yes. And we need to sort of at least list some of these harms mm -hmm. that you cause to yourself by refusing to forgive. Because refusing to forgive... See, most people think refusing to forgive is good. Yeah. It helps me maintain a position of power and control, helps me feel like I'm in the right and you're in the wrong, and it helps me feel superior and all these other things that they feel are good. That's, right? yes. And also, now that we define what's involved in forgiveness, which includes uh, humility to the pain. And and to pain. A, to pain. To emotional pain. The exact pain that w happened to me at the time I was harmed. So people think, well, forgiving, um, that's bad for me. I'm going to have to feel all these terrible things. That feels, it feels like I'm being harmed again when I go through the Well, that's the what process. people say, but it's not true. But, it's not true, but this is why people... Uh, interestingly, it's what people say who haven't gone through the <laughs> process. <laughs> we have a lot of rationalisations uh, for of, not Of forgiving. course, and we have a lot of these rationalisations to prevent ourselves from going through the process. Yeah. So, so the reality is, from God's perspective, that there are a, 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 there's so many personal, harm, so much personal harm that we're doing to ourselves yeah. by not forgiving, and it's wise for us to put that on the scales, isn't it? Yes. Like, so on one hand, I've got to feel my emotions, but what's the result of me not feeling my emotions? On one hand, I need to go through the process of feeling some uh, pain that other people did to me. What is the result if I don't do that? You know, yeah. this is, this is, nobody looks at that. <laughs> They're all looking at, oh, you know, these other things, you know, but never looking at what are the results if I don't do it. Yeah. So war is the result of you not doing it. Yes. Why, why do you think we have war on the planet? Because everybody on the planet doesn't want to forgive. That's why we have war. It's not, yeah. there's no other reason. Yeah. for war, yeah. then everybody on the planet doesn't want to forgive, yeah. right? And you and those of us who say, oh, but I do want to forgive, well, let's look at it honestly. Do you want to go through this whole <laughs> process of forgiving? Because as yeah. we've discussed it, because the majority of people, if they're honest with themselves, would have to say, no, they don't, yes. for the very same reasons that Sandra has for saying she doesn't want to, yep. right? Yep. And, and so that's the attitude that causes war. Yeah. So, so pain and suffering caused by war, there's rapes, Murder, like uh, uh, death, death, destruction, disability, destruction economic, pro property, terrible, <laughs> famine. Uh, there's so many yeah, yeah. ill effects. And you're not harmed by that? Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't think so. I think you are. You know, you're yeah. definitely harmed by that. Yeah. The, All right. Our damaged emotions remain in our soul. Yeah. They, you carry them everywhere. They're like a burden, a weight, a, 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 a baggage. Like they're right rocks that you're carrying around with yourself and they influence everything you do, everything you think, every way you act, everything you feel, everything, mm. right? So surely if you want to be relieved of that burden, you'd be better off forgiving, yeah. surely, <laughs> right? But again, <laughs> most people don't see that. Oh, I've got to feel an emotion. Oh, I'd be better off carrying it around for the next 25 years than feeling it, is the way we see yeah. it. Like, I'm better off causing my own death from an emotion, like yeah. cancers and so forth are causing your own death from emotion. But even my own old age and death are caused by emotion, like yeah. re resistance to emotion. I'd even rather do that yeah. than feel it. Yeah. 
I'd rather damage my children than feel it. Mm -hmm. I'd rather damage other people than feel it. I'd rather have a terrible relationship with my partner than yeah. feel it. I'd rather, if you, you know, this is the reality. We'd rather do almost anything than feel. Yeah. Which tells us how afraid of feeling we are. It does. Right. It does. Yeah. Uh, but, but it's good to catalog the things. Um, I was just lying in bed last night doing it myself thinking, right, this is happening in my life. This is happening in my life. This, I'm still in this demand or an addiction with, in, this, in this way. And that makes me feel bad about myself, the fact that I am in that demand and addiction. I still, you know, I still don't feel alive and happy all the time. I still don't, you know, all these things. And yet I know what I need to do. It's just this process of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But it's a good way to balance the scales because what I, what I notice, I... But the inter there's an interesting thing, and that is a person who wants to not forgive always will have their scales balanced in harmony with their not desire forgive. to not forgive. Yeah. Yeah. A person who really desires to forgive will always have their scales balanced in harmony with their desire to forgive. Now, that's an interesting thing. Yeah. But so that tells us that while we have these kind of feelings where we're listing all the reasons why we shouldn't forgive. Yeah. That's really telling us that we really just don't have a desire to forgive. Yes. Right. Yeah. And and we're always going to list things supporting our true desire. Yeah. So this is one way we can accurately assess our true desire mm -hmm. by going, oh, I'm making a whole heap of excuses here. Mm -hmm. And we've, you and I have frequently had this conversation. If you're making a whole heap of excuses about maintaining a certain course of action, you don't want to do the opposite thing. Mm -hmm. Right. So look at that. Yeah. <laughs> look at why you don't want to. Nothing's going to change until you want to. Yeah. Until you want to. Yeah. And this is what we need to do with this, uh, you know, desire to not forgive, the refusal to forgive. Yeah. We need to make sure that we examine the motivations for such desires, yeah. but also accurately assess the results. The results and and I've frequently too. said in conversations with you, you've got to look at what you're getting from your action mm -hmm. before you'll probably change your action. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And in fact, that's what compensation, attraction, a, a, uh, conscious, everything is trying to yeah. help me see the results, isn't it? Yeah. But let's, let's us in our feeble way, no way in measure of God's laws, just read some now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not quite as powerful, but still important. So we remain in our demands and addictions to avoid emotions. Yes. In other words, we're always demanding of other people, well, they've got to do this and they've got to do that for me and they've got to make sure they do what I want. I've got to, I've got to be in control. I've got to, you know, this and, is... And that, that does have an effect on your level of self-respect over time. You, you... It's not only that. It, it's tiring. <laughs> You're always <laughs> like, having to exert all this energy to get yeah, there. Yeah, like trying to control yeah. other people. Like, honestly, you can barely control yourself. Yes. You know, and particularly if you've got all these emotions, you barely can control yourself. Why are you even trying to control somebody else as well as yourself? Yeah. <laughs> you might as well give that up. You can't even control yourself. How do you expect you're ever going to control them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you're right. It takes a lot of energy to continually meet our addictions. And sometimes I've joked with you and said, like... If only I used my powers for good rather than evil. Someone, there's someone else who's so driven in their addictions, you know. If only they used all that energy for, for, for good. good, for their own growth. Wow, yeah. they'd be getting so much done. But yeah. it just takes so much. And we see people work themselves into the ground for in their, their businesses or, you know, in marriages it just, just because they just desperately want that addiction. Yeah. 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 No, that's full on. All right, we also remain bound to the person who harmed us. Mm. So in important. other words, we're not going to let them go. We're always going to think about them. We're always going to finish up thinking about what they do. And then we try to stop ourselves from thinking about them. But that mm. also has the effect that we stop remembering our life yeah. and we stop remembering good things. And we eventually get Alzheimer's from that. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, that's how far that goes, yeah. you know, trying to not remember. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we try. We, we always, can't help but remember, always, and then we try to not remember. And to do that, we've got to basically go psychotic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and having worked in some limited way in my professional life with some people with Alzheimer's and dementia, the sad thing is often people do get caught in 
a loop of only remembering things that are distressing. That's right. In their effort to not remember, yeah. they've forgotten everything else except but the, thing. the thing. That's yeah. right. That's how it goes. It's not everyone it, with Alzheimer's, but it's like it that, happens but frequently. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it happens frequently. That yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, and also, we talked about in the series that. It, it's, it happens on a metaphysical level, this, bo- this connection. And um, we also then have this response that is not loving coming up in us all the time to that person, don't we? And, and yeah. that... It, or anybody, even anybody who reminds us of that person. Like yeah. it's just, it feels out of control, our response almost. Yeah, well, this is why most people try to shut it down and deny it and try to, den- you know, sh- shut down their emotional response to it. But that has other negative effects on our life of shutting down our emotions always has negative effects on our life. Our soul has been designed to feel. Yeah. And as soon as we start shutting it down, we're going to be causing major problems. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Um, we've kind of mentioned this. We remain with a desire to harm others who are similar to the person who harmed us or who remind us. So we have a desire them. to harm. Yeah. Here. So when you refuse to give in, you have a desire to harm. Even if you don't recognise it, you do have a desire to harm mm. and, uh, and, you know, and punish, actually. And so, you know, that's going to be acted out. You, you're going to end up doing it. Mm. You can't avoid it, doing it if you, go, if you have the desire to do it. Mm. It's going to be hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we remain estranged from God. Of course, like, you know, God's laws all revolve around, particularly the part from getting from the first sphere to the celestial heavens, uh, the seven spheres of progression, if you like, between those points, they're all about forgiving. Yeah. Going through emotions, being humble, getting to the point where you can accept God's feelings Mm. about matters. Mm. So, of course, you're going to be estranged from God if you keep doing it. Yeah. We remain in complete denial of the conscience. Yeah, we're basically saying, I don't want to hear from God that not forgiving Mm. is a bad thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to hear from God that not forgiving is a good thing. Yeah. Now, God's trying to say the opposite to you, to that. Mm. So, you know, how are you ever going to hear what God's saying to you? Even Do, on- You, you want to hear the complete opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we can want to hear the complete opposite about one little thing. But by rejecting the conscience on that matter... We also start to reject the conscience on every matter, don't well, it's we? A, we it's, it's the emotion of preclusion. You, you have an emotion in your heart precluding something from operating. Naturally, that thing is going to be precluded from yeah. operating everywhere. Yeah. You try to do the same with your emotions, it's going to have the same effect. The same happens with your conscience. Yeah. yeah. So that means a lot of harm to your life, really, where yeah. you could have had a lot of benefit. Yeah. Yeah. We consign ourselves to a slow and painful compensation process. Yeah, honestly, something that you could deal with in a few months or a few years at the most often turns into a nightmare of hundreds of years. Yeah. And, you know, you frequently see this when it comes to severe problems like abuse or torture or other things like that, where people have been there for thousands of years not even dealing with it, but in that place. And honestly, you know, what what could be a few years turns into can potentially turn into thousands of years yeah. of hardship. Yeah. Do you really like are you really assessing that? If you look at it even in physical on the physical side of things, you can see it does turn into years and years of hardship. Like denial of a specific problem causes physical problems in your body. While you have that physical problem in the body, it it might go on for your whole life while you're on earth. Mm. Like where you have that physical problem in your body. Mm-hmm. You're willing to do that, like pull up with all that pain just because you didn't forgive. Yeah. It's, it's amazing what we're willing to do yeah. when it comes to this issue of forgiveness. Yeah. Man, we're willing to completely shut down absolutely everything, including our own life yeah. on earth, in order to not forgive. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's very sad. Yeah. We increase the likelihood of our creation of more personal sin. Yeah, I would say not only likely, it's certain. Yeah. Like, it's certain. Yeah. You, you're now in a state where, you know, everything you're trying to deny within yourself, you're carrying around, it's going to impact every choice, every decision, every thought, every mm. emotion that you have. Mm. Every interaction you have with another person is going to be influenced by it. You can't help but be influenced by yeah. it. You've, unless you forgive, it's going to remain influential for the rest of your life. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
We avoid accepting God's truth and remain in our false beliefs. Yeah, so that's really sad because it's God's truth that leads us to God's love and it's God's truth that leads us to all fact and it's God's truth that leads us to all happiness. You know, you're going to shut down God's truth. You're going to do a lot of damage to your life. People don't realise that, you know, that I see them skipping around issues of God's truth saying, oh, I'll take my time to accept that. What? What? Why? Yeah. And, and, and how, like, how terribly disastrous is that to, yeah. to your life, you know? Yeah. It's a terrible thing for you to make that decision. Yeah. 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 So there's obviously a lot of ways that we're harmed, and we just mentioned a few, really, uh, when yeah. we don't forgive, because God, who's a supremely loving being, is continually <laughs> attempting to prompt us and guide us towards forgiveness through compensation and through the conscience. So naturally, I mean, when we're refusing to forgive, we're in opposition to that supremely loving being, and that's going to harm us in so many ways. Mm. It's hard to measure, isn't it? Yeah. And if you, if you could truly hear God through the conscience, you'd be hearing, why are you doing this yeah. to yourself? Yeah. You know, why, why are you harming yourself like this? Mm. You know, that's what you'd be hearing from God if you could hear what God's saying through your conscience. The fact that you believe you're not harming yourself means that you're not hearing your conscience at all. Yeah. Right? When you, if you're doing these things and not, you know, not hearing someone going, why are you doing all these self-abusive mm. things? Because not forgiving is a self-abusive act. Mm. And so, you know... Yeah, yeah. You, you, God, you know, God's quite clear about that. If you connect with God through the conscious, he's quite clear about that. Yeah, I feel I, it's been a wonderful experience going through this forgiveness and repentance series with you because, um, as viewers will know, when we hit the conscience section, there was a lot of emotion that came up for me. But having gone through that process somewhat emotionally while we recorded and outside of recording, I actually feel God's opinion about forgiveness a lot more strongly mm -hmm. Just because I removed the opposition to some things about being told, being told, uh, <laughs> yeah, and and giving up my parents' definitions, yeah. and also giving up the definition of what a parent is, yes. you know, because our definition of what a parent is is very much controlled by our relationship with our earth-based parents mm. initially, mm. and unless you give that up, you're not going to really understand what a loving parent would do. Yeah. And, and God's a loving parent. He's, yeah. he's not going to do what our parents did. Yeah. Yeah. How my not forgiving affects others. So we'll or, just... Can I say, we could also say in this title, how my refusal to forgive affects others. Yes. Can we? <laughs> yeah. Because really I'm refusing when I'm not forgiving. That's right. It's not, it's not like, oh, you know, I just haven't forgiven them yet. No, you know, honestly... It's to do with desire. Yeah. Forgiveness is relinked to desire. So, so if I'm not forgiving others, it's because I'm refusing to forgive others. Mm -hmm. no, there's no other reason. I'm yeah. refusing to do it. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, so Sandra's statements in her letter indicate that she's got a lot of desires to not forgive mm. people who've harmed her or who she perceives have harmed her. Um, so that's the opposite of what love would do. Hmm. Uh, she... And if she was truly sincere, she would look at that and go, right, I've got to work through those desires, Yeah. release whatever is the underlying emotional reason for them, and yeah. God will tell her what they are if she wants to know. Yeah. Um, but she will need to go through the emotional process of releasing them. Yeah, it's not judging the desires because um, that just takes us further away from actually releasing them. Of course. Uh, in fact, often we judge them to not have to deal with them. That's the purpose of yeah. personal judgment, to refuse to go through a process. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so acknowledging, okay, my desires are out of harm with what, would love, with what love would do. She also has a strong desire to see people, certain people as her enemies. Um, uh, who she has to oppose and she doesn't want them to have any happiness or success. So there's a lot within that um, about not forgiving others. So I want to spend some time on how not forgiving, we've talked about how it harms me, but let's talk about how it harms other people. Sure, yeah. Who benefits when I refuse to forgive? 
does anyone benefit when I refuse to forgive the people who've harmed me? <laughs> <laughs> so we can see this as um, people like the person who I, who's harmed me, the person, the other people who haven't harmed me. Does anyone benefit from me saying I'm not forgiving that person who harmed me? No one. No one. Not a single person. No. <laughs> <laughs> not a single person. Yeah. So refusing to forgive, you're not going to benefit a single person. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's interesting in itself, isn't it? Because I'm, I'm, there's a lot of reasons why that's the case, of course. I'm in complete disharmony with, with God's laws of correction. Like I'm refusing to be even corrected. So yeah. the compensatory laws are going to have to work. I'm also, yeah, and I'm, I'm in disharmony with the very way my soul is created to work. Yeah, because like, it, it's created to release emotion, not store it. Immediately that it's felt, it's, it's created to feel it, and mm. the process of not forgiving means shutting down. Yeah, it's effort, yeah. time, energy, uh, all gets lost. Yeah, and that can't benefit anyone because I'm no. opposing. So what a waste of time, what a waste of energy, <laughs> what a waste of your life. Yeah. Like it yeah. just wastes everything, it's wasteful. Uh, like yeah. it's definitely not economical no it's the most wasteful thing you could do with your life yeah. to hold on to a grudge or hold on to you know what somebody's done to you yeah yeah i'm definitely not trying to make other people happy uh, not giving or receiving love so can't obviously receive not, god's love can't get god's love because i'm refusing to forgive others i can't yeah. ask for god's forgiveness of myself yeah and I'm going to choose i am choosing to remain unloving towards the person who harmed me now that is my sin. Exactly. So I'm sinning now. And I might even go to the point where I would try to punish them. Yeah, right. big sin. Yeah. So, of course, I know through the, even the laws of compensation, that's going to not benefit me or anyone yeah. else. Yeah. And I know there's a high likelihood I'm going to act out all of the harm that's been done to me to somebody else who wasn't the original person who exactly. harmed me. So in other words, oh, there's a high likelihood I'm going to act it out with innocent people. Yeah. And, and I'd like to talk about that in depth in the sure. next section. Sure. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like, like, who benefits from refusing to forgive? No one. Who benefits when I do forgive? Everyone, Everyone. potentially. Yeah. Because it depends on how they respond to the forgiveness, right? Yeah. But potentially everyone. And um, if... If not everyone, at least me. Yeah. <laughs> and people who haven't harmed me. And we talk about and that. And people who it. haven't harmed me and who I haven't potentially yeah. harmed. Yeah. Uh, they all, that, it all means they're relieved of any potential harm from yeah. me. So, yeah, there's a lot of advantages to doing it. And, mm. uh, but when I refuse to forgive, there's no advantages for doing that. No. None at all. No. And, and you, you can see in the world today the results of refusal to forgive it. It's quite plain. Yeah really that there's no benefit to it no. you know yeah. we've got this continuing never-ending cycles of violence that you know some some of the nations have been fighting for thousands of years mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and also there's a there's a huge uh increase in um issues such as depression which comes from the suppression of emotion exactly. a lot of our technology is now almost completely designed around facilitating the avoidance of emotion mm -hmm. and that comes because people are so entrenched in their desire to not forgive that they need to continually seek out things that help them suppress emotionally yeah distraction distraction mm -hmm. numbing you know obesity Alcohol is on abuse, the rise drug abuse drug abuse food abuse <laughs> all kinds of abuse of others as well as ourselves and it's all the it's very harmful and it's all the results of trying to suppress to, emotion yeah 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 and it's almost like we facilitate so my choosing not to forgive affects me and harms me uh then that choice causes me to take so many actions and seek out certain things and support certain industries which then facilitates the same kind of shutdown towards forgiveness in much younger people who haven't yet even developed their will against it mm -hmm. they're just like responding to the environment which is saying don't forgive don't forgive so it's incredibly harmful yeah. to them well, this is why we end up supporting companies that mm -hmm. you know rape the third world yeah. and harm the third world and so forth it's all because of our refusal to forgive in the first place yeah. you know so big companies that you know like apple and places like that that are you know that have that have been 
gotten big from the on the backs of uh, of, of of a lot of s destructive uh, feelings towards the third world and mm -hmm. um, we, we don't see any problem with it no. because because that's what we feel, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Punish the people who don't deserve things. Or, or we, we, our conscience might niggle us about it, but our desire to avoid our emotion and to receive the goods that are going to help me avoid my emotion in the most effective way, um, yeah. then that supersedes any kind of... And when feeling. we don't forgive, we get very selfish. Yeah. We get very selfish. Because uh, remember, the, the desire to not forgive is driven by the underlying dominant selfish emotion, which is to avoid your bad emotions, your, your, your totally. emotions that you don't want to feel. So totally. because it's driven by this underlying desire, naturally it's going to have some very terrible effects. Yes. Um, so not only does it not benefit everybody, anyone, yeah. it has terrible negative effects on everybody. Yes, it harms uh, others. It harms everybody. Yeah. 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 Whether you want to or not, you're doing it. Yeah. Like, you, you know, most people who refuse to forgive go, oh, but I'm loving in other areas. No, you're not. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're going to act out this stuff that you've got going on mm. with a lot of other people you mm. are, mm. With, and particularly with your children if you've got them. Mm. Mm. Yes, yeah. Refusing to forgive affects those who haven't harmed me. I feel this is a very important section we're going to talk about now. Mm. How does my choice to not forgive my abuser affect those who haven't hurt or harmed me? Well, you know, again, this is a very open-ended question, isn't it? Because yeah. there's literally hundreds and hundreds of ways. But maybe if we could just summarise three yeah. and just so it gives people a bit of a picture. Um, so, do you want me to yeah. go? Yeah. yeah. And then you can respond. Yeah, so, perhaps that's the way to proceed. Yeah. I'll reject or be mistrusting of people who haven't harmed me. And perhaps it's more correct to say I'm not going to be discerning about who might harm me and who will harm me. Not only that, you believe everybody will. Yeah. It's not, it's not even that yeah. you're not discerning. You just have this underlying belief because you haven't released the harm. You assume that everybody's going to harm you yeah. that way, you yeah. know. And, and it's a primary basic like almost animal based assumption it's very hard to change it's very yeah. hard to change without release of emotion absolutely right? i i've tried you, you can't you can you, try you can you can you can like you could try to do different you can almost critically analyze the behavior your the 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 behavior of the person that yeah. you're trying to get closer to for example or you, that you you know you're in an interaction with um but there's this kind of primal part of your brain which is affected by the suppressed emotion well uh, yeah it's a primal part of your emotion now yeah the emotion is is there it needs to be released but you're not releasing it but it's going to now dominate yeah. every thought you have every feeling you have in an interaction with other people yeah. so for example you know some people who choose to not forgive their mum about certain things they carry around this injury with every woman yeah. every woman on the planet is yeah. going to be the same she, they're going to treat every woman on planet as if they're going to be the same yeah. as well. So before you even begin any interactions, it's, it's dominated and controlled by the emotion that you haven't forgiven. And you know? what, what about this aspect of it where I end up seeking the company of people who will harm me in the same way and rejecting the company because this i've done this many times i reject the company of the person yeah. who will challenge that false belief within me that other people are going to that going to behave just in the same way as my mum or whatever yeah. you know I, I so push the, away in women. other words the people who are loving challenge the feeling in you that there are people who are loving because you don't believe there are no you think everybody's unloving yeah. so somebody who is actually loving you've got to believe is unloving Yes. You, you, you do everything possible to try to make them. You'll even set them up to try to see whether they'll be unloving. You'll even yeah. do that. Yeah. Like you, you'll, you'll go to great extremes to prove to yourself your own truth. It's you know. incredibly sad. And I, I, I've been grappling with this a bit lately where I realise I prefer the pain of the false belief that everyone will hate me or be unloving towards me in a certain way. I live in that. I seek out reinforcement for that. I reject people who might challenge that in me. That feels bad. 
But I prefer that to the pain that would be triggered in me if I opened up to the people who do love did, me. Or, and also opened up to the people who harmed you. Yeah, and the pain of when I was actually harmed. Yeah. 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 Because obviously the the person who actually loves me is going to present the most contrast to that. Is that that's right. And that's why they often trigger our sadness the most. Yes. And this is why we fight them the most. And try to set them up to be a baddie. That's right. To, to we try to make out they our, are bad. Yeah. Because we'd rather not feel the emotion. We'd yeah. rather believe something false about them than feel the emotion. Yeah. So there's a lot of very distorted, emotionally distorted, psychologically distorted things we do when we don't forgive. So that really affects those other people as much as it affects me. Those other people can't get to know me. They can't be near me. They're going to be have well, to endure my prejudice. Yeah, and you're going to be to... toxic to them. Yeah, you, you're going to. They're going to. They're going to know that every interaction with you, you're already presuming the worst about them. You're yeah. already making them, them out to be an ogre, yeah. a, a monster, yeah. before you even begin. You're making them out to be the same as the people who harmed you. And gee, I see this a lot with you, with people who have been harmed in different spiritual movements. Gee, they just, it's very, very difficult for them, yeah. unless they're willing to feel about that past experience, to accept that you might have any good intentions. That's right. Yeah. It's impossible for them like, to even accept it because they haven't released or forgiven the harm that's already been done, they're not capable of even accepting that someone might be speaking about religion but have good motivations yeah. and actually be speaking truth. Yeah. They can't accept it. Yeah. It's, it's just remarkable how much psychologically we demand that everybody be the same as what our injury is. And, and, yeah. and it's a terrible thing we do, but we do it because we're not forgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, in keeping with that, I'll hurt or punish people who have not harmed me. So because I'm not attributing the actual hurt and anger and fear and grief that came from that original episode where I was harmed, then I'm going to project on everyone else, just as we've said, you're going to be the same. Or, or I'm going to... Um, Feed the addiction to to um, to continue believing. Yes, that everyone's going to be this way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and and I, and I sort of feel too here. There's this sort of issue of um, wanting to punish, like yeah, that's what I was getting. At. Everybody, isn't there? There's it's an like, addiction to sort of um, uh, meet out punishment, not upon the person who harmed me. And but on innocent people who might remind me of that person. Like, yes, and, and can we say that that's a lack of courage? Yeah. It's a lack of courage, for one thing, a lack of courage to feel your own emotions. That's yes. all it's about. Yeah. 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 You yeah. see this a lot in gender problems yes. where people have been harmed by the opposite gender and then they say, that's it. Everyone of that gender is like that, or the yeah. same gender sometimes. Yeah, just as we were mentioning about mothers yeah. earlier. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and it, and it, they carry it over into every relationship, every into every partnership, into their relationship with their children. They try to turn their children into a better version of what they believe their parent wasn't. You know, like and so forth, and it just it causes a lot of gender problems for the child as the well. The poor child is now yeah. growing up with all these demands and expectations. You're harming your children mm -hmm. doing this, but, but you think you're turning them into some nice child while you're actually turning them into some very self-destructive and destructive of other people, children. Yeah. yeah. Who, you know, and, and this is a constant problem <laughs> with, with the cycle of abuse that occurs. We, our refusal to forgive perpetrates a cycle. Yeah. And, and while we perpetrate a cycle, the next generation is consigned to have as much harm, if not more, yeah. than we ourselves have. Well, that's our final point here. So my children, or I want to say young people in my environment, yep. will be forced to take on my injuries and may be harmed in the same way that I was, or I might harm them in an additional way. Or they may perpetrate harm the same way that I was harmed. Yes. Like, so... It, because of all sorts of inter integrating emotions that occur when, when children are bossed around in this way. Because they are struggling to develop their own sense of their free will. Sometimes they'll rebel, rebel or they so act in a way that they wouldn't 
have normally chosen to do something, but they're just fighting now the, the feeling, they don't want to fully experience the feeling of being suppressed and overwhelmed by that. They either act in complete harmony with what the parent wants them to or in complete disharmony. Neither one is really their true self, loving self-expression. It's just a way of, it's a result of us choosing, us as the parent not choosing to forgive yeah. and having a very profound impact upon our, the children around us. Yeah. Yeah. The main sins that the average person has to repent for are what they've done to their children. Yeah. And, and on, honestly, the majority of people on, on the planet, while they're living here, um, do not feel they're doing any damage to their children. No. And so that's why, you know, oftentimes when we do damage to someone else, we at least have a, you know, God through the conscience will tell us that the damage there. And there are times when we have some sort of conscience-based mechanism that causes us to pause. Mm. But when it comes to children, most of us have none of that. Yeah. None of that at all, because our children absorb everything without complaint, usually. And it's only once they become teenagers, they usually start to complain. And, and the trouble is, then, our behaviour is firmly set by the time they've become teenagers. So now we're in complete, uh, you know, competition and, and even violent, violent disagreement with each other. Yeah. Um, so naturally, there's not much going to be much resolution in that process either. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a very destructive thing we do when we don't forgive mm. to, to ourselves and everyone else. And, and, and as this section really points out, isn't it, that it, it affects those, not only those who we've harmed yeah. or, or, or so who've harmed us, who've harmed us but it affects those who, who have never hurt us at all. Yeah. And yet they are negatively affected by our refusal to forgive. Yeah. You know, the, the average person on the planet who has sexual dysfunction, the average person, you know, the different people who have different dysfunctional parts of their life, mm -hmm. it's all caused by somebody not forgiving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> at some point. At some point. You know, so. It's incredible. You know, there's a lot, a lot to be said for understanding forgiveness and going through it yeah and and this theme we've been talking about because we've just been talking in this big long section the effects of not forgiving uh is to weigh up the harm that my lack of forgiveness is doing yeah to, to me to, to others, correctly assess yes to want to see that because that will help us yeah, it will at least, like, as I said at the beginning, that we've got this sort of pendulum in our minds a lot of the times. And, we, and when we look at forgiveness, we, we have it weighed heavily in, we shouldn't do it, it's a bad mm. thing, mm. without assessing all of these negative effects of us mm. not refusing to forgive. Yeah. If we assessed all the negative effects, it would be like this. Yeah. We'd be like, why wouldn't I forgive? Yeah. You know, why, do I want, why do I want to continue to engage all these negative effects? Mm. So, so our pendulum would swing into the positive where we'd go, no, forgiving is essential. I need to do this. And to be honest, until, the, until a large majority of people on the planet have that swing, mm -hmm. there will be no change on this planet mm -hmm. in terms of how we live our lives while we're on Earth. Yeah. Until a large, you know, and it doesn't need a majority it just needs a large number so that the others can see the advantages of it. Yeah, critical mass. The, of there people. needs to be a critical yeah. mass, but unless there's a critical mass, then it's all we're going to be like this for the for, for while humanity lives on Earth. Yeah. They'll be like this once they pass. Of course, eventually the critical mass does go in that direction. Yeah. So in the spirit world, the critical mass for a lot of people has gone in the opposite direction, and then they start to see improvements and whatever, and so there is some shifting on the matter. Yeah. But, but while on Earth, the critical mass is well and truly entrenched mm -hmm. in this, no, I'm not going to forgive, I, uh, you know, yeah. I, I want the opposite to this. And, and while that is the case, there is, there is not really going to be any change on the planet at all mm. in terms of our, our happiness now and, and the beauty of our life. You know, it's going to be much the same as what we have now. Yeah. yeah. And from what you're saying, actually a worsening state. Well, you know, the reality is over the centuries, you know, men's condition has fluctuated very mi in minor ways. You know, it's yeah. gone up a little, down a little, up a little, down a little. But most of the time now it's pretty well established in the hills. Yeah. Living life on earth is pretty much established in the hills. Mm. And it's going to remain so. Yeah until 
uh, there's a critical mass of people who forgive. And demonstrate the power of that state. Yeah, yeah. that they actually sincerely go through the state themselves yeah. and then they demonstrate the power of that in their lives. Once there's a critical mass of people doing that, now we have the possibility of, mm -hmm. of continual progress and happiness to be improvement mm -hmm. on, on the planet. Mm. Mm. Well, that probably leads us nicely to our next section, which is going to be about the effects of desiring to forgive. Yeah.